You know how they say some things are timeless? The interview you're about to hear is exactly that, timeless. And I think it deserves another listen. And if you've never heard this interview before, you're in for a real treat. Please enjoy this interview rewind. Always be helping people, always be of this thought of, hey, what's the biggest win for them? Because when you give them a big win, you win 10 times over. That's what I've discovered. Wow, that's huge. You're listening to the Just Start Real Estate Podcast. If you're serious about your real estate investing business and need real answers, you are in the right place. And now, your host, Mike Simmons. All right, guys, thank you for joining me here on the show. Once again, I appreciate it. Welcome back if you are a longtime listener. And if not, if this is the first time, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you giving me a shot at taking up some of the precious time in your day. I don't take it for granted, so I'm going to try to deliver nothing but value. So uh, to that end, here we go. Guys, if you are enjoying this show, by the way, or if you listen to this show and you're like, hey, this is really, really good. I enjoy it. I'm going to start listening to more. Please subscribe, number one. But number two, a rating and review is always appreciated. Uh, I know that people love to give back when they feel like they're getting value. I don't need money, although, hey, who doesn't need money, right? I'll take money. But really what I want from you is a rating and review. If you can rate and review the show, that would be awesome. That is the currency of podcasting, and uh, I would really appreciate that. Guys, today we have a great, great one for you. I have the CEO of ReferCo, uh, the world's foremost authority in business referrals, right? In an age where we're spending tons of money to try to get people to listen to us, we're sending out postcards and mailers and all these things to try to get attention. This gentleman talks about how to get it through referrals and not spend that kind of money. In just his third year of real estate, this guy did 187 transactions and over $40 million entirely from referrals, over 500 referrals, in fact. And then for the next eight years, he received over 500 referrals every single year and netted over a million dollars. He is an international best-selling author of the book, The Seven Levels of Communication Go From Relationships to Referrals, and it's been the number one book in real estate on Amazon for over nine years. He's also shared the stage with people like George W. Bush, Tony Robbins, Barbara Corcoran, and John Maxwell. And now he is on our show. His name is Michael J. Mayer, and he was an absolute pleasure, and I was excited to have him on. And I don't even want to waste any more time. I want to dive right into it because it was such a great interview. So without any further ado, I give you Michael J. Mayer. All right, Michael, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy, but I'm really excited about this one. I think we have some really cool things to talk about. So thank you. Well, I'll tell you, Mike, thanks a million for having me on. I appreciate it. I love the name Just Start Real Estate and I uh, appreciate what you're doing out there for the for the industry as a whole. And uh, like I said, it's an honor and privilege to be on. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. And uh, we talked about it in the intro, but you've shared the stage with some big names, uh, most notably George W. Bush, Tony Robbins, Barbara Corcoran, some big names uh, that you've been around. You've done a lot of things and your your uh, trajectory has been explosive and you wrote, you've written some books that we'll get into a little bit. But before we dive into everything that's going on with you now and over the last 10 years, can we rewind a little bit and tell me what you were doing pre uh, real estate, if anything, unless this was your first thing, but what'd you do pre real estate and what got you into real estate to begin with? Yeah. So I was a high school math teacher and coach of three sports. I coached football, basketball, and baseball. And uh, I was uh, doing the teaching thing and teaching at the highest level district teacher of the year in my first year and, and, you know, really dedicated teacher. And uh, a couple, you know, a couple things. One is there was a teacher down the hall who, uh, you know, basically came in five minutes before his first class, left five minutes after his last class. And I was there early for, ha uh, for you know, uh, study halls and late for practice. And he made about $15,000 more than I did because he was a 30 year veteran where I was, I was a, you know, first year dude. Yeah. And so there was that. And then I, I knew the pathway to riches was real estate. So I'd always contemplated getting into uh, real estate and I wanted to learn more about it. So I decided, you know what, I'll get licensed to learn more about real estate. And another thing happened at the same time, I bought my first home. So I bought my first home. Uh, it was a new construction home. And so I got a chance to really kind of build a relationship with the ladies who, who ran the subdivision. 
And they just kept going, man, you'd be great in real estate. You should be in real estate. You should do real estate. And uh, so I went ahead and got licensed and, and then um, it ended up a softball buddy wanted to buy their first home and uh, had helped them buy their first home and then had a house ring party 45 days later for them, got 11 referrals wow. at the house ring party. And uh, from there, it, it just took off. 37 transactions my first year, 87 my second, 187 my third, 205 my fourth, 255 my fifth. Wow. So it just, it just, and it was all referral. You know, I didn't start getting repeat until, you know, the third or fourth year. Yeah. Um, and of course, investing has always been uh, the backbone from a personal standpoint of all the real estate as well. Yeah. So let's frame this. What year are we talking that you got your license since 99? 99. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you went through the really awesome. like great, you know, the, the 2000s, the first half of the 2000s, which was phenomenal, right? Prices yep. soaring and all that stuff. And you've yep. also been through 08, 09 and, and some of that stuff. Just out of curiosity, it's, I know it's not the focus of what we're going to talk about, but how did you weather that storm? How did that go for you in like 08, 09, you know, 2010? Yeah, so we had a record year, right? I mean, isn't that, isn't that funny? I mean, here's what happens, you know, good market referrals are really good. Mm -hmm. In a bad market, referrals are everything, Yeah. you know, is they stop going to the lowest bidder. They stop going to an, somebody they met on the internet. Like when they're talking about losing their home, yeah. they want to talk to somebody they can trust, you know, so that's where the referrals really, really took off. We were already getting about 400, 500 referrals and we went over 600 referrals. The average agent gets five a year. You know, we were already at, at four to 500. It went over 600 in 2008, over 600 in 2009. And, uh, you know, we had our best years ever. We had to learn how to do a short sale. We had to learn how to do a foreclosure. Yeah. You know, we had to, you know, we had to do a lot of things with that and, and how to save homes is, is was a, as big a deal as how to sell homes yeah and um so that that we weathered it really really well and that's why i knew i needed to to write a book is i had a system that worked really well in good markets but it even worked better in in bad or down markets or confusing markets like today i think the biggest thing we're, we're finding in 2020 is that the 7l system was built for this it was built for uh, the, the time that we're facing right now. It, it's really hard to cold call people right now. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to door knock people right now. Yep. And even mailing things is, is uh, you know, being kind of discouraged. And then, you know, you've got to do slide broadcast or some big giant dial and it just doesn't resonate like it did yeah. kind of pre-COVID. You're right. It's funny. I did a lot of direct mail prior to COVID and I, I realized everything, it sort of took a hit and I thought, intuitively people are at home they're getting them like what's happening but i think for some people certainly in my market there was this especially early on with covid there was this fear about touching anything that came in your mail so i think people were like just like using like tongs or whatever and just pushing the mail into the garbage if they knew it wasn't something that was a bill or something they had to open so our and ours, mail's up mike yeah. yeah mail is up like yeah. everybody's getting more mail why because that's the only thing that people have to spend on who you know, a lot of people do it through mass and bulk. Yeah. We're the opposite side of the spectrum. I'm big into personalized and customized service versus ma mass and bulk. Right. Well, but a lot of people don't understand that. So they go mass and bulk. It, I just got my mail earlier and it's, you know, it's a stack that thick. Yeah. Well, how hard is it to stand out in a, in a really, I mean, literally it's trash, 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 yep. trash. Oh, yep. you know, here's a check or, oh, here's this, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and they, they keep the two good. And unfortunately, even your best postcards are getting thrown away with the rest of the, of the junk mail. Yep. You did, know? did you ever utilize more of a mass marketing approach before you got really great at referrals? Did you ever try that? So, yeah, of course. I mean, I've tried right. everything. You yeah. know, my background, my MBA is in marketing and communication. So, so I literally, you, you name it. I've, I've probably tried it even to getting my hand slapped for a, for an ad that said, buyer beware, you know, don't buy a condo downtown until you hear this. Wow. And then it was a pre-recorded message. Right. Yeah. So I've, I've done, I've done literally it all. So that was, that was uh, our best thing was, it was, you know, you want, how, how do you get the inbound calls versus having to do a lot of the, the outbound stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, I will tell you, you know, some of our best were, were instead of doing mass postcard is do 
handwritten notes, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, a lot of people are going to absentee owners right now. And and honestly, it's going to be a phenomenal market for investors over the next 18 months. Yeah. And, and so it's one of those where it's like, okay, you know, write handwritten notes instead of the, and don't have them typed handwritten notes. They stand out like a sore thumb, yeah. but actually do handwritten notes right? and, and just write handwritten note. They're going to open it. That's the first key instead of throwing it away. Yeah. And then put in there. It's just like, hey, listen, we we've invested in your neighborhood before. We, you know, we want to invest in it again. I, you know, we know you're not there. Uh, you know, at the very least, we'd love to check on it for you if you're out of town. I mean, so handwritten mm-hmm. notes have been very, very effective from, you know, I would almost call it like a semi mass or a semi bulk. You're not you're not gonna bulk email or bulk mail five thousand of those. Yeah. But if you have a good solid target market that you can go for, we've done it on the real estate side, we have hit a home run with handwritten notes to neighborhoods saying, hey, listen, we've seen everything on the market. My buyer really wants something in your neighborhood. Give us a call. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Yeah. But you know, maybe you could sell, sell your home for more than you think, Yeah. right? With yeah. a PS, call this number for more information. Nice. So, and then we've done it with apartment complexes, right? We, we, we handwritten notes, sign up for a first time home buyer seminar and and they've been very attracted to that the seven steps to a power note we use on that is you know we use blue ink not black ink uh we use um non non-branded stationary okay right uh we we use the word you as much as possible straight from marketing you know mm-hmm. we avoid the words i me or my yep we want that to you know, be specific with our, our praise or, or request. The more vague you are, the less likely they are to take action. Yep. Um, the power of positive projection is, is one of those where it's just like, you know, notice about their neighborhood, what you really see are positives, right? Why will it sell yep. and, or where could they go next? And then you want to slope the line slightly up and to the right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's straight. And then you want to use the power of a PS or a post-it. And the, the PS is, you know, PS call this pre-recorded message or really powerful is they open up and there's a yellow post-it note with your call to action on the yellow post-it note. Right. Right. So they've got to move the post-it note to read the message. Yeah. And that's very, very powerful that's for smart. anyone yeah. that you want to get the attention of. Yeah, that's super smart. I, w- I want to go back for a second. You mentioned quickly unbranded postcards. Mm-hmm. That That's interesting to me because I think that there is some debate whether or not you should ha- brand or not. Why do you do unbranded? Mm-hmm. What is your philosophy on that? Listen, if you're going to send a card to your mom, are you going to have it branded, right? I mean, I think it's one of those where it's it's more personal like it also lowers the barriers. Like this is a lighthouse, right? This is all it is, is a lighthouse. Yeah. Now lighthouse does tie to us and our brand a little bit, but it just lowers the barriers, right? Yeah. If you put the brand on, I mean, it's, it, honestly, if this had a brand on the front, it would, it would evoke entirely different emotions yeah. than if it has a lighthouse or a picture from their neighborhood or uh, you know, a picture from a neighborhood park Yep. or whatever it may be, it's just like, oh, okay, this is the neighbor sending this versus, oh, they want business. You yep. know, yep. the more we can get away from the the money thing and, and yep. you know, what, what do we really want from anybody that we have a relationship? What is the most important currency in today's world? It, it's not money, you know, it's trust. Yeah, Trust is the number one currency. So, you know, that's what it does is if you see an unbranded card, you're going to, you're going to open it, you're going to trust it and just say, Hey, you know, Hey neighbor, we're, you know, we're interested in your property. Don't mean to be distractive or, or interruptive or, or whatever it may be. But if you have, you know, it may not work, but if it could work, what would it look like? Yeah. I love that. I love it because people think, you know, it's funny. I've had small investors, like, you know, I say small, I mean like their business is relatively small to new and they'll say, you know, what do you think of this card? And it'll be like, you know, home buyers, USA, we buy houses all over. We want, you know, it's like you're trying to sound big, but you have an advantage of being small. Like people would rather deal with a person in a small situation than this global, you know, we gobble up houses in every neighborhood. Nobody feels excited about that. Nobody trusts yeah. that person. So yeah, like yeah, there is no person, right? right? I mean, that's the thing. If you're a real estate investor, I think you've got to be a person first and foremost. I think we need to educate 
the people around us that we are always investing. Yeah. You know, so sharing on Facebook, not how great you are or not how great you're, but, but just like, we're always looking, we do that with talent. Like we're always looking to hire, even though we may not have a position open. Yeah. We're always looking to hire. Well, you know, the right talent comes along, you hire them. It's the same thing with real estate investing is, is, are we buying every property that comes across our desk? The answer is no way, Yeah. but we want all those properties to come across our desk versus us having to, to chase it down, yeah. you know, and, and that's, that's the attractive model versus the chase model. And uh, I will tell you the attractive model is, is very, very powerful because I mean, we pay less than anybody else when we have the opportunity because we have no competition. Right. Now we're not going to rob anybody blind or, or take advantage of anybody, but we've got for not, you know, 137 for a 187. We, you know, it's like, we've got these, these really powerful deals because you know, it's, we, they were referred yep. to us, you know? Yeah. And refer, you said, like you said it already, trust is number one. And if you can get a referral, that's built in trust. I mean, certainly you have to maintain that, but you have this leg up from someone who just sent a postcard or a letter or whatever, a door hanger, whatever it is. Um, you, you mentioned your book, Seven Levels of Communication. Uh, I'd like to talk about that for a second because I'm, I'm yeah, exactly. And and I, I can see you mentioned uh, a seminar or an event, like you create this first time home buyer thing and then you use that to sort of create that relationship and the, the yeah. authority. Um, and I notice in your in your hierarchy or your pyramid of of the impact level that you get from different levels of communication, you have handwritten notes and phone calls below events and seminars, right? That's so right. as That's a right. as an investor or a realtor, whatever the case yeah. may be, creating these events that bring people to you to learn to give them value is a super effective way. I, according is. to what I'm seeing here, is a is a super effective way. Yeah. So, you know, you, you start at the bottom, you've got advertising, which is what a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. And then you've got direct mail just above advertising. And, and then you've got electronic communication, right? Mm -hmm. And the bottom three levels are what I call the informational zone. They're great for informing, you know, confirming, you can even do updating through that. Yep. But they're horrible for selling, convincing, uh, or, or doing anything with influence, yep. right? And then you've got the middle level, which is handwritten notes, which can be influential, can be used to sell. Most people have never thought of them that way. And then the top three levels are phone call, events and seminars, and one-on-one -on -one meetings. And we all know that lots of things have been sold through the phone, lots of things have been sold through events, and lots of things have been sold one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, most of our consultations with you know sellers who wanna sell are one-on-one, -on -one, sure. right? Why yep. is it? Privacy, confidentiality, yep. you know, fiduciary duty. People are going to say things in a one-on-one -on -one they would never say in a one-on-two, yeah. -on yeah. even. Yeah. You know, so the difference with events and seminars, though, is that they're leverageable and scalable. One-on-ones are not are not scalable. Yeah. You know, you got a one-on-one. -on -one, it takes thirty minutes. You're you're occupied for thirty minutes. Sure. So I think the big thing is, it, and, and in today's world, we've had the zig in, the, in a world full of zag, you know, it, it's is no longer is it a live event, it's going to be a virtual event. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've mastered many different types of, of virtual events, so, you know, the Smart Restart Summit, uh, which was marketed to realtors, you know, we've got these online classes that we're doing in a, in, in a well, actually this week, uh, which is the Sweet Dreams, which is a ritual um, class on a nightly ritual, Sunday night ritual. And then we have the, the morning ritual, wrote the book, Miracle Morning yep. for Real Estate Agents. And it's a 30 mornings morning ritual class, just in time for school, yep. you know, <laughs> but also we've discovered that when people have a morning ritual and they have a nightly ritual, they're more productive all day because they've, they've got some structure in their day, not too much, but enough. Uh, you know, why is a river more powerful than a reservoir, right? A reservoir has no boundaries. A river has some constraint, some yeah. boundary. Yeah. So a river has more energy. People are the same way. Let's talk about that because I think, you know, folks who are listening to this, and there's a lot of people listening who they're, they're full-time in what they do. They're entrepreneurs, yeah. they have their own business. And they think, you know, and I did the same thing. I thought the same thing when I quit my, my nine to five years ago. Thank goodness. I don't have to get up at six o'clock. Yep. I don't have to punch a clock at seven thirty. I yep. don't have to punch a clock at five. And then, you know, I don't I don't have I can be free of all the structure that I had, right? Mm -hmm. And what I found myself was is like spinning my wheels early on. I felt 
like I had no sense of what I was supposed to do next. I had this whiteboard full of things and I didn't know what to do. So let's talk about structure a little bit. Why is that important? Maybe now more than ever uh, when people feel a little bit out of control because of the situation that we're all in right now in the world. Um, why is structure so important to us? Control, right? You just, you just hit it on the head. It is, you know, when do we have stress? We have stress when uh, we don't have control over something right? We, yeah. we don't have control over time or we don't have control over another person. You know, this leads to frustration and stress and, and in many cases, illness even. So, you know, it's just like going back to school, right? We, we went to school, we had, you know, math from nine to 10, we had uh, science from 10 to 11 and so on. And, and so like, why did that work? Well, because we had a focus mm -hmm. and uh, talk about a focus, no phones, no, you know, no games, we were learning about science for an hour. We were learning about math for an hour. Yeah. And it's the same way as, is, yeah, I tell you, same thing with me when I gave up my nine to five, right? It's like, woo, -hoo, I'm free, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the what we want, and I will tell you with real estate, real estate is the best industry in the world. It is because there is so much freedom, so much variety within it naturally. Yeah. But what we've got to do is, is we've got to take control of, of our time. Because if we don't, we'll find ourselves spending a lot. We'll be really reactive. Yeah. And a reactive way is not just a not a way to live our life, but it also causes a lot of stress in the people around us. Yeah. You know, when we've got to go look at a property or we've got to go do this or we got and it's last minute, it's last second. What if you looked at properties on Thursday, made offers on Fridays or Sundays, and you know, it was one of those where you had a structure. I'm not talking about blocking off every hour in your schedule. But I am talking about giving yourself some consistency. That's why we teach the morning rituals and the nightly rituals is if you just do the morning ritual and you just do the nightly ritual, you're probably going to see the power of structure and apply it to your midday. Yeah. You know? And you kind of, so, you, you said it, right? You're not over constraining yourself. The river right. isn't constrained on four sides. It's constrained on yeah. two sides. So not, not the way a lot of people teach it though. A lot yeah. of people teach it where every hour is blocked off. Now, Patrick Mahomes just a couple of weeks ago signed a 500 million, I mean, he's a half a billion dollar contract, yeah. highest paid professional athlete of all time. Yep. And it's like, all right, why? he's the most ritualized guy ever. His, his Sunday game starts after the previous game. Yeah. So he, literally every hour is blocked all the way in, including time for his girlfriend and time for this and time. Like it is literally structured all the way. Really? I don't recommend that to, to anybody. You know, yeah. we have this 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 thing we call white space. And white space is you can do anything you want. So you need plenty of white space on a daily and weekly basis. But you know what you also need to do? You also need to have these things where you get stuff done. You just, yeah. and don't do it reactively. Do it proactively. Try to, I mean, the problem that we have a lot of times, we feel behind in life. We feel like we're always trying to catch up. Boy, if I just had an extra hour. But the fact of the matter is you got plenty of time. Yeah. You know, you, you, you do have that time. So let's be ahead of it. The Sunday night ritual is a great example. What if you looked at your schedule for the week and you just looked at it and you think, where are my opportunities here? What's my challenge here? Where's the drive time going to be a problem? What are the kids doing? What's the husband doing? What's the spouse doing? Whatever. And it's like, what does that look like? And how can I maximize it? How can I make an opportunity? Oh, I'm already dressed up. I look good. You know what? I'm going to go to a networking event that day, go look up a networking event, or you see a virtual networking opportunity or whatever. Maybe you're already dressed, showered, you look good, which for the real estate investors, like one or two days a week, right? Really? Yeah. But yeah. it's, I mean, you know, so it, it's one of those where it's like, you know, when you're dressed up and get your virtual Zooms going, yeah. meet Zooms, do do things like that and, and see where the opportunity is. I lay out my outfits for the whole week on Sunday night. I know what I'm eating all week from Sunday night on. No kidding. I know what my exercise plan looks like for the week. And uh, I also am always looking for like, you know, right after this, I have two Zooms that are scheduled that were not scheduled Sunday, right? So Monday, I communicated with a couple people. I'm already going to be in this look. So yeah. let's, you know, let's back it up with a couple of podcast episodes. Yeah.
That's super so. smart. And I love the idea of white spaces because you're right. People go to this like they have this nine to five and it's super structured and they're being told what, what they have to do every minute of every day. And then they get out of that. They start their business. They're like, woohoo, like you said, free time. And they go, this pendulum swings all the way to the other side. Now I have no structure. I don't, yeah. I don't plan anything, right? I'm never going to put on a tie again. And it, it's really somewhere more in the middle. And I think in the middle is where you have structure, but you also have that free space, that white space. Because I know for me, if I was scheduled from 9 a.m. until, you know, 6 p.m. at night, I, would, I wouldn't I would do it. I would, I would rebel against my own schedule. I need breaks in there um, so that I can kind of regather myself and feel like I've gotten a, a chance to breathe. So I love that, man. I, I love the idea of, of the morning and the nightly ritual. Can you give us some sense of maybe a little bit more of what that morning ritual looks like at a high level in the night the night ritual for people who are curious? Yeah, so so we've got acronyms. I, I, I prefer to teach by acronym. And and if you've read 7L, you, you're probably like full of acronyms. And and 7L is a love story that even a guy could read. So it's, it's something <laughs> I suggest. I will tell you, there, there is a lifestyle of love, generosity, and appreciation that that I talk about in 7L, that it, it doesn't just make your real estate investing or your real estate business better, it makes your entire life better, right? So, so we can do something in our life that literally helps our business and we can do something in our business that literally makes our life better. We know it's all about relationships and, yep. you know, I'm an introvert, you know, so, so an introvert writing a book about relationships, uh, we've found to be very attractive. It's been number one in real estate sales for 10 straight years. Yeah. And it's, it's been really successful. Well, it's because it's written from the aspect of an introvert, not, nece- not necessarily an extrovert. An introvert will do really well with this and has to do it. An extrovert, it's just like, okay, you've been kind of all over the place. Now we're <laughs> going to give you a system yeah. to be even more impressive. So, yeah. You know, the morning ritual is, is, is savers with an extra A, S-A-A-V-E-R-S. It's silence, affirmations, appreciations. Affirmations are I am statements. I am committed to, I am a best-selling author. I am a, you know, I am earning a million dollars a year in real estate investing, whatever, whatever you want that to be, but, Mm -hmm. but preview your future self, right? Yeah. And then appreciations are just, what do we appreciate now? We need to take this insatiable appetite for what we don't have and replace it with an insatiable appreciation for what we do have and appreciate what we do have. What happens is when we live in appreciation, what you appreciate, appreciates. Hmm. So if you want more of something, appreciate what you have. You want more great relationships, appreciate the one you have. If you you don't appreciate the ones you have, you'll never get any more. If you want more money, appreciate the money you have. And that was a big lesson I had to learn in real estate because I was making a lot of money, but it was coming in and out at, at almost the same pace. Yeah. And then when I discovered a budget and quarterly tax pay and taking like really appreciating the choices and freedom money gives, all of a sudden I made a lot more money. You know, why? Because it's like I appreciated the money I have. It's the same thing with anything. Appreciate the home you have if you want more great homes. Appreciate you know, the investments you have, if you, and, and that's the thing I see a lot of real estate investors is they kind of, they keep moving on, yeah. but they forget to appreciate what they have yep. and, and we need to do that. So yeah. B is for visualization. Um, the E is for exercise for the morning ritual. The R is for reading, nonfiction reading. We should always be well read. And then the S is for scribbling or, or scribing or mm-hmm. journaling. Journaling okay. is a, is a big part of my life and a big part of my morning. The Sunday night ritual is sweet, which is look at your schedule, look at the weather, look at your eating plan, look at your exercise plan for the week. And then the T is tie it all together in to-dos, right? So tie it all together, which means lay out your outfits for the week. I know that sounds really simple, some somewhat dumb, but I will tell you not have it. We all go through decision fatigue mm-hmm. and decision fatigue is the more decisions we make, the worse decisions we'll make. So we want to make less decisions because less decisions will lead to better decisions. And when you don't have to decide what to wear, you don't have to decide anything about the weather. You don't have to, I mean, this more divorces are caused by, you know, the spouse going, Hey, what's for dinner? You know, I don't care. Just (laughs) fix something, you know? So it's like one more decision breaks the camel's back kind of thing. That's awesome. uh, That's the Sunday night ritual. And then the nightly ritual is dreams, which is have a dim time get everybody off technology at a time. Like we talked about earlier, this isn't about like dim time at 8 p.m. or whatever, is you pick your dim time. It could be 11 p.m., but have 
a time where you turn off the technology, get the blue light out of your world mm. and just like listen to some music and, and, and start the process of slowing down, winding down and uh, your pre-sleep ritual. The R is for reading again, uh, but we encourage just like five to 10 minutes reading at night. The E is evaluate, evaluate your day. You know, what could have gone better? What could have gone worse? What, you know, what do you appreciate? What do you, who do you need to congratulate? Who do you need to communicate with? You know, what's your to-dos for the next day? And then the A is for affirm again. And there's been a lot of research on this pre-sleep affirmation is if you have a pre-sleep affirmation, you're far more likely to achieve that dream or goal. Mm. And then the M is for meditate. We're not talking a lot of woo-woo stuff. We're really, it's like breathing, um, calm. The app has a great meditation app where it'll actually read you a story or it will uh, hmm. help you with breathing or it will just like calm you down and take you into the sleep. It's only a 30 minute meditation and it's all automatic on your phone. It doesn't mess with your alarm or anything else. Yeah. And then the S of dreams is sleep. I just gave you the broad, you know, like sure. two minute version. Uh, but we dive deep into each of the letters on the acronym okay. and help people where it really helps is, is back to school. Yeah. You know, it helps with the kids structure. Yeah. It helps with the spouse. It helps with the, you know, uh, we have everybody from stay at home moms to CEOs of fortune 500 companies who have taken our rituals classes. That's a, that's awesome. We mentioned this early on, but you know, the children, I think everyone can agree to some extent that children need structure. They thrive in structure. They crave structure, whether they know it or yeah. not. But why do we think when we get to some uh, arbitrary age, we all of a sudden don't need structure anymore? You know, adults try to fight structure because they're, they're stuck with it so often. And, and the fact of the matter is we do better that. You mentioned your, your book, and we've talked about it quite a bit, um, the seven L's. But what I wanted to mention to people who are, who are going to get it, and you should get it, is unlike a lot of you know, business books, it's not written in a way where it's like a textbook. It's a story, and you 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 alluded to that, right? It's a it's a love story that that could, guys can enjoy too. You wrote it in story form, which I think for a lot of people who have maybe business book fatigue, right? Just being told yeah. all these like yeah. bullet points that yeah. there's actually a story there that weaves in the philosophy into it, which is very, very cool. Um, I love the decision fatigue thing. And I think it's kind of goes where they said like Stephen Jobs used to wear that turtleneck and his jeans because he didn't want to have to make that decision. Uh, and I've heard that enough to know that that's a thing, right? So the more decisions and as entrepreneurs and, and we're making so many decisions all the time, you're right. One less decision uh, makes tons of sense. You yeah, it's not just Jobs, right? It's yeah. Zuckerberg wears right. the same gray shirt every day. Yep. You've got Elon Musk who wears the same thing. Jeff Bezos. I mean, they're billionaires. I guess we should listen to them. Yeah, but exactly. where we're really seeing the pop is when we take everyday ordinary people and we we have them create their own uniform mm -hmm. and they don't have to think about it. But it's also branding them mm -hmm. on a daily. So people are expecting them to to have this like you're wearing a T-shirt. I'm wearing a T-shirt like this is consistent mm -hmm. with not only my brand, but my comfort level. Yeah. And I wear a, I wear a black T-shirt every day. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll throw something over it. Yep. But but having what is you know what what is your uniform yeah. you know and yep. and and be consistent Con, you know people love consistency yeah and, and one more thing I want to mention of what you just said because there was so much in there I was just picking out certain things that resonated specifically with me but I love the evaluate your day. So often we start the day with high hopes. We squander it because we're not structured, right? We don't do what we should do. We get we get we get sucked into something that isn't important. And then we get to the end of the day and we just go to bed, right? Yeah. We don't evaluate yeah. how we did good or bad, right? Maybe it was a great day. Let's take a second yeah. to think about that and, and what yeah. we accomplished. And I, I I don't do it. I I'll be honest, I never evaluate my day at the end of the day. I'm just I'm always thinking about the next day. I'm never yeah. thinking about the day I was just in. So I love that. And meditate is something that I, I know I need to get on board. I've heard more people, you and 10 other people have said that to me in the last two months. Like mm -hmm. meditation is is a key component to to a healthy life and a healthy brain and productivity and all that. So um, that's definitely in the the Calm app you told me about. I'm going to check that out because that sounds like it's right up my alley. It's simple. Yeah. It's easy. I don't have to think about it. It just works. So that's cool. Very inexpensive too. Yeah. And, and you know, that's like, this is the, this is the class, you know, book for for sweet dreams, right? One of our 30, it's a 30 day class, 30 day challenge. But like in here is it says night, night 21, right? Yeah. So it's like, uh, how would you rate your day on a scale of one to 10? What would it take to make it a 10 or 10 plus? 
how would you rate your sleep last night on a scale of one to 10? What would it take to make that a 10 or 10 plus? Yeah. How much hydrate? What, how, you know, how much water did you drink today? You know, great. All these are what we call the great eights. Yeah. Cause all of them end in ATE or EAT. So what went great today? I know that's a really, you know, and then celebrate. What do you need to celebrate today? That's a big one. Yeah. Because a lot of times when we go to bed, what we do is we worry right? We worry about the property. We worry about the the person. We worry about the employee. We worry about our worst client, mm. you know, whatever it may be. We worry yep. about our son. We worry about our daughter. We worry about, and it's like, what if we just cleared our head of everything? What happens is it's not just a clear headed sleep. It's actually a way to evoke brilliance. Like you, your solutions can be solved during your sleep. And that's what's happening in these classes is people are having this euphoric or this mm -hmm. eureka moment yeah. during the class, not because of anything we're doing, but it's because they're actually clearing their mind before they go to sleep. Yeah. You know, and, and, and they're, they're, it, you know, you can trigger, you can trigger your sub, you know, I don't want to get into it too much, but the fact of the matter is, is, is you can actually use your sleep as a superpower. There are a couple of great TED talks out there where people who run sleep centers have like one of them is sleep is a superpower by Mark. What's his last name? Um, I can't remember his last name. I apologize. That's right. Mark. We'll look it up and put it in the it's show. It's like notes. Mark Winters or Mark White. Something okay. Like that. Okay. I'll check that out. You know, it's funny you say that you just triggered something in my head. So I don't journal at night at, at the at present, um, but I, I'm, I'm very interested in that too. But it's funny, my wife will tell me sometimes, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had all these thoughts and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I just sat up, I wrote them all down and I put it down and bam, right back to sleep, right? But she couldn't, she can't until she gets it out of her head and puts it down on paper. I mean, to me, that's that's the most proof I need. I, I see this all the time. We call it take out the trash right? Take out the trash. We, it's part of the regurgitate process. Mm -hmm. Regurgitate is just get it out of your head and get it on a paper. I know you can't read this because my handwriting so awful, but, but you, it's literally all the shoulds. Should do, want to do, yeah. um, dream of doing, whatever it may be, just get it on paper. And what's amazing is I have checked off so many of these just during the last Sweet Dreams class because it's, it's made me focus. Like one thing is I had to redo my library. I've read over 2,500 books. And when we moved, we do what people do when they move. You put them up, right? You put them up in the shelves and, yep. and they weren't organized. So I organized them all. It took four or five hours. But it's amazing how organizing the books help, helped organize the brain. That's you know, now if you wanted a book recommendation or whatever, I could literally go find it and, you know, ship awesome. it off or whatever it may be. That's incredible. And I know part of what you talk about and part of what's important to you is generosity. Mm -hmm. um, what, what exactly does that mean to you? What is generosity? Yeah. How does that play in? Yeah. So great thought. So I help business owners of all kinds build their businesses on a foundation of love, generosity, and appreciation. Too many people go to work and act one way, and then they go home and, and act a different way. And they're out of legacy, right? They're out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And and what if you could build your business based on love, generosity, and appreciation? I say, listen, not only can you do that, but should you do that? You should do that. And it's actually a better business model than doing the other things that other people do during manipulation or overcoming objections or or sales techniques or or this this mass or bulk model mm -hmm. is you can actually have a better, more profitable business by building it on love, generosity, and appreciation. So so love is love what you do, do what you love. And, and it really is like, it's love what you do and do what you love. So do what you love. What do you love about real estate investing? What do you, I mean, what we love is the finished product. Like when we flip a house, we don't just like make it bare essentials. We stage it, we make it beautiful. We have yeah. taken a dump, you know, and we have turned it into a thing of beauty and we have renovated neighborhoods and people have thanked us for, for taking this, this, this dilapidated home and making it a dream home, you know? Yep. And, and so we love that. Do what you, but the other part is love what you do. There's going to be things you do that are tougher. There's going to be things that you've got to do. And so instead of just doing them, love what you do, love those things. If you want to be a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper ever. If yeah. you're going to be a prince, be the best prince. That's straight from Plato and Socrates. You know, yeah. and then, so how does generosity play in? Well, generosity is love in action. 
if you just have the love, the superpower, and you're sitting there on the couch or not doing anything, then you're not utilizing the superpower love. You know, yeah. it's like Superman being able to fly and, and save people. And he's just sitting there with his feet up watching TV, eating bonbons. <laughs> right. And and it's like he's not using his superpower. Well, I see a lot of people not utilizing their superpower, which is love. And generosity is love and action. Like, seek to help people. It doesn't take money. You know, treasure is only one of our gifts of generosity. We can help people by connecting them to other people. Yep. We can help people by talking. We can help people by listening. We can t help people by um, praying for them. We can help people by teaching them something. We can help people by uh, whatever it may be. So yeah. what happens is when you, you, you have this life of helping people, generosity, acting and generosity, what happens is people want to reciprocate. So what if I could tell you we had the secret for how to make the universe conspire for your success? And the secret to having the universe conspire for your success is generosity. Go put your love and act, help as many people as you can. Yeah. And and like I said, it doesn't it doesn't take any money. I was doing it when I was in debt. You know, I was doing it when I had no money and I'll guess what? I, I think I have even more power to, to give now. Right. Yeah. But it's one of those where we, we all have the ability to, to act in generosity. We also have a third element to this, which is appreciation and appreciation is love in reaction. So things are going to happen. You're going to get referred a property. You're going to get referred an opportunity. You're going to get things are going to happen to you, good, bad, and ugly. Mm -hmm. Appreciate them all. Appreciate COVID-19, right? Appreciate murder hornets, right? For the act of avoiding them. Yeah. You know, appreciate all these things because, you know, guess what? They're making us change the way we had to do business. They're making a, so appreciate it instead of complaining about it or or being down about it or letting it paralyze you. That's what I've seen this year more than anything yeah. is paralyzed and panicked people. Listen, we can't live life that way. Yeah. We need to le live life cautious, concerned, caring, but also a life of action. And, and, and that's the appreciation. We need to appreciate what's going on. Do I appreciate that people have died from this? I, I, I don't, right? I, I don't want that necessarily, but I need to appreciate that I'm alive. I need to appreciate that my friends are alive. Hmm. My family's alive. We're doing good. We haven't gotten it, knock on wood. And, you know, it, it's just love, generosity, and appreciation. All right, when things happen, I'm going to appreciate it. I'm not just going to appreciate it. I'm going to appreciate it at a 10 level. Like, dang, I appreciate it. I'm going to put my appreciation in writing. I'm going to really, really express my appreciation. And then the flip side is always be given value, always give massive value first, always be helping people, always be of this thought of, hey, what's the biggest win for them? Because when you give them a big win, you win 10 times over. That's what I've discovered. Wow, that's huge. Uh, man, such great lessons for people, especially the run, 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 go, 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 make money, be pissed off all the time, not get enough sleep, look at your phone till the minute you dropped in bed. Like all of this stuff that you're talking about is how to not only be successful, how to be healthy, how to be appreciative, how to give it back, put that out into the world. Because believe me, when you when you do put that generosity out and that love, uh, it comes back. It does, and it, and it just it compounds itself. And all of this stuff is is uh, is so under talked about. First of all, it's interesting because nobody, not nobody, but very few people talk about this kind of stuff. It's all about making more money, you know, driving bigger cars, all this stuff. Um, so thank you for that message. It's it's important, and I think that uh, I think it's great to put that out into the world. Um, but so if you if anybody hasn't gotten seven levels of communication, grab that and also the Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents. Uh, you wrote that book as well. Two great books that I highly recommend. Uh, I'm I'm most of the way through the seven levels of communication, so I'm I'm enjoying that quite a bit. That's why I was excited to talk to you. I love the format that it's written in. The very that's a story. So that's that's beautiful because you don't have to go ugh, you know, another charts and bullet points and you know all these things. It's it's a story, so it's very easy yeah. to read. What, what can people, what should people know about what you're currently working on, what you're excited about, where they can find you? Like what, what should people know about you uh, right now in July of 2020? Yeah. So referco.com would be a great kind of overview. Uh, but I will tell you what, I, what I'm really excited about right now is, is helping people get structure in a, in a world of chaos, you know, and that, that is the rituals that, you know, we're teaching the sweet dreams class 
uh, at 30evenings.com. And then the 30 mornings class at 30mornings.com. So 30mornings.com and 30evenings.com to check out that a little bit more. Very inexpensive classes. Uh, we're really doing we, Why do we charge for them? Is so people will show up. Mm-hmm. You know, if they have a little bit of skin in the game, yep. then then they, they come. But our real focus is we'd love to give everybody a morning ritual, a Sunday night ritual, and a nightly ritual that they can count on and be consistent with and have a better life because they're doing it. And their family... It, we have 12 year old kids that are taking this class, you know? Wow. So talk to this a lot of times about this, this success acronym, you know, what's it take to be a success in the current environment? S is structure. The first S is structure. The U is take care of you, you know, health, wealth, and happiness. There's a lot of people who would trade their wealth for health and happiness right now, Yep. you know, and then you've got take care of you, make sure you take care of yourself. And then the C is, is clarity, I have like four clarity questions that I encourage people that, you know, where's my opportunity right now? What's my biggest challenge right now? What's the one thing such that by doing it, everything else is easier and, and, or necessary. And then, you know, what, how, how do I make this the biggest win? Right. And then you've got C the second C is communicate more and better. That's something that, that we need to be doing. And then the E is energy. We need to manage our energy. Energy is the most precious resource known to man. It's more precious than money. It's more precious than even time. Energy is everything. We have less energy than we do time. And then the the second S is serve, serve more. The last S of success is strategy. You know, you can change your life by changing your strategy. The way you do things makes a difference. How do you do what you're doing a little bit better? And what happens is with a one degree tweak, sometimes you get 10X results. You know, just a post-it note in a handwritten note will get you more people who call. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo- I love that. And it's funny, you know, we wake up every day and we, we're going to have a day, hopefully, right? If we wake up, we're going to have a day. Why not structure it in the most yeah. effective way that you can possibly structure it? It's going to happen. It's going to come and go. And then if you get to the end of the day and you do evaluate your day, why not be happy with the way it turned out more often than not, right? We can't control everything, but we can be happy more often than not. Michael, listen, go ahead, go ahead. No, go, go. uh, I was just just saying, you know, we're talking about this. It's it's like, well, why doesn't Michael just go with the flow, right? And then you've got, (laughs) here's the thing. I do go with the flow. I have a lot of spontaneous time. I have a lot of white space. What this does is it mixes the best of go with the flow with get in the flow. You know, get in the flow of what you really need to do. And I mean, even on vacation, we'll do a time block for a vacation and people go, that sounds a little too structured for a vacation. No, we have lots of white space for the beach or whatever. But we look at it like we want to do ski do or we want to do fishing. We want it to be sunny on those days. Yeah. So listen, they have it every day. It's like, oh, Tuesday, sunny, Thursday, sunny. We're going to do ski do on Tuesday. We're going to do fishing on Thursday. Well, it rained on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Everybody else is like so sad. They can't go fishing. They had to tell their kids we can't go fishing today yeah. because it's raining or can't do the sea do's because it's raining. Guess what? Tuesday and Thursday, we were out there having a, fu- a blast. My kid picked up a giant starfish. Well, you know, here's the thing. Was that worth me spending 10 minutes on Sunday yep. going over the schedule? The answer is 100%. <laughs> you know, the pictures know. alone were worth it. Yeah. And hearing everybody else's sob story <laughs> when we're at the campfire, you know, and, yeah. and we're like, yeah, you know, we went fishing today and we caught a king mackerel, you know. I, 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 so it's it just, it just it's these one degree tweaks, really simple things. <laughs> that make all the difference in life. I'm so glad you said that. I I am with you 10,000%. I don't (laughs) understand people who say, well, we're going to this place and ah, we're not even going to make a reservation. Like, we're just going to show up and see what happens. Like, are you kidding me? Like, do you have any sense of what you want to do at all? And do you realize it may not work every single day? And the hotel you want could be booked when you get like, I get spontaneity. I get the white spaces. There's a time and a place for like unstructured. We don't know what's going to happen, but my goodness, like... I, can, I love that. It's, that makes me laugh because I'm such a crusader for that. And I, I have friends who go, ah, you're too structured. Don't worry about it. It'll all work out. Well, no, it won't if you're on your last day and it rains that day and you wanted to be on the ski dues, right? Like it won't work out. So don't tell me it'll work out. So anyways, I love that, man. Any complaint you ever let, look, every any complaint you're about to make, look back and say, could I have prevented this or, or done something to schedule around it, right? Any yeah. complaint, whatever you're complaining about, it's just like how a lot of times you complain about your kids not doing well on a test. Well, okay. 
is there anything you could have done? Yeah, you could have done homework nights on Tuesday and Thursday for the test on Friday. Yeah. You know, preparation is the key. School is easy. School, getting straight A's, I've, I'm a teacher. I taught for four years. It's easy to get straight A's. You know what you got to do? Show up and do the work. Yeah. That's it. That's the way to get A's. You're like, no, you no. Yeah, that's it. All you got to do is show up and do the work. And totally. it's kind of like that in life for adults. You know, Joey's now, Joey used to be nine. He used to love school, structure, do all that. You know, he had to be struck. And like now Joey's 38. You know, he still needs structure. Yeah. He still needs to take proactive control of his life. And there's no teacher there. There's yeah. no coach there. There's no, you know, parent there necessarily to tell them what to do. So yeah. we tend to go off the deep end the other way. And how's that working for you? Right. You know? Yeah, you're right. I love it. Everything that's happening in your life, good or bad, there's something you could have done to affect it. So I love Maybe. that message. Right. It's just taking yeah. accountability and right control of your life. I love that. Well, listen, Michael, I appreciate your time, man. This has been fantastic, better than even I had hoped. So, um, Thank you for that. Thank you for everything you gave. Uh, you, you gave away a lot of the things that you teach. You, you at a high level kind of gave all that away. So thank you. I think it's going to be very helpful for people. Uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, we talked about, uh, they can go to referco.com. Uh, you mentioned that your, your 30evenings.com and 30mornings.com, you, you talked about that. So I'm, I'm going to put that in the show notes for people. If you're driving, if you're running in, in the gym on a treadmill, don't worry about it. We got you. Uh, anything else you want people to know before we go? I, this has been awesome, by the way. I've really enjoyed this. You know what? I, I want them to uh, subscribe to your podcast. And uh, we you. do run a podcast called Referrals Podcast, which yep. is for anybody who ever wants referrals. I truly believe that our purpose in life, yeah, literally, did you know that you were going to learn your purpose in life on this show today? That's right. Your purpose in life <laughs> is to be referable. Yeah. I truly believe that because if you're referable, that means you have high character, you're full of integrity. And you're also highly competent, which means you're really good at something. Yep. And the third is, is you're able to communicate about the thing that you're highly competent about and that you have a high character about. So, you know, character, competence, communication makes you referable. Yep. And I think the thing is, is first of all, be a referable person, but don't just stop there. Build a referable business. If, if your business isn't referable, what are you doing wrong? Yeah. You know, why can't people brag about it? Why, yeah. pe why won't people talk about you and your business? You need to figure that out. Once you start becoming remarkable and referable, you'll never have to chase business again. It, more opportunities will come to you in a day than you'll be able to handle. Yeah. And guess what? Picking and choosing the opportunity is a lot better than chasing opportunity. Completely agree. Thank you again. You were the referrals podcast. Thank you for mentioning that. I wanted to mention that as well. So go check out that podcast. Give them a rating review. Just subscribe to it. Download it. Do all those things. It's well worth it. All right, Michael, thank you for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you for making time for us. And uh, I wish you nothing but success in the future, my friend. My pleasure. Thank right. you. Yep. Have a great one. Bye-bye. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I loved it. That's good stuff. Definitely things we need to talk about more as entrepreneurs and business owners of how to be, you know, how to give back, how to, how to, you know, put good things out into the world and how to train ourselves to operate in a way that makes us successful. I love that stuff. And I think it's important. It's not just about the X's and O's. It's not about getting the contract, selling the contract, making the money. There's more to life and more to business than just that. So I love these kind of conversations. And Michael is an absolute authority in this area. Tons of success in real estate. And now he's broadened that out to uh, a wider audience. And I, I was excited to have him on the show. So hopefully you really loved it because I enjoyed having it uh, to, to, to bring to you and to have it on the show. Um, so these are the kind of things that I want to continue to keep packing in. Good stuff, whether it's pure real estate techniques or some of the stuff that surrounds all that, that holds it, that kind of glues it together and makes it work. So hopefully you guys loved it. Uh, if today is not working out for you, you still have time to change it. Do something about it. Go out there and get started. Start that thing that you've been putting off. Start your business if you haven't started it yet. The first step is what you need to get over. Get out there and just start. Make today the best day. I'll see you next time.